Hello there, I'm Scotty. You're not. And now uh, it's time for my top 10 80s horror movies. No slashers. Uh, it's gonna the slashers are gonna be in their own video. Uh, so there's no slashers here. Uh, <clears throat> so I got some honorable mentions here. We have David Cronenberg's The Fly. Fantastic effects, fantastic acting, fantastic film. Georgie Romero's Dawn of the Dead. In Day of the Dead, I thought at least Day of the Dead would crack my top 10, but it didn't. I do like Day of the Dead more than Dawn, but they're both good films. American Werewolf in London, which it, you could say this is my number 11. All right, because I love this film. Pet Cemetery, another great film. Bumpkinhead, a great creature flick. Double feature here, The Howling, which I'm not as high end as American Werewolf in London, but it's not a bad flick. And The Fog, John Carpenter, of course. Another one that you consider number 12, I guess, Hellraiser, which did not make my top 10, which is weird because I love Hellraiser, and Poltergeist. <clears throat> Another great film. Why is the camera keep glitching? I don't know why. Uh, so without further ado, my top 10. Number 10. Feeling better now that we're through. Feeling better now that I'm over you. House from 1984. 86. 1986. And a fantastic film about Roger Cobb. He's uh, moved into his aunt's house after her suicide. And it's a house where his son disappeared and all these weird things start happening, ghosts and stuff. Great effects. Uh, he's forced to confront an entity he thought had been dead to get his son back. It's fantastic effects. It's a fantastic horror comedy. And I do recommend it. You know, very, I think it's very underrated because a lot of people like this, but not a lot of people talk about this. So I really love it. Welcome to Fright Night. For real. Oh, you're so cool, Brewster. And dinner is in the oven. This was a fantastic first watch. I watched it three times now. Still a fantastic film. Vampire film. I'm a big vampire guy, so this is good for me. Chris Sarandon, Ronnie McDowell, and his never name on there. William Ragsdale all have great performances. And the actor who plays Stephen Jeffries, I think. Stephen Jeffries, whatever. All great performances and the effects in this. Oh, the, the look of, uh, what's her face? The, the girlfriend, the girlfriend's uh, face is kind of weird, but still pretty good. I do recommend it as a fantastic uh, vampire flick. It's not as good as another one that's going to be on my list later, but it's still a great vampire flick. Well, for the next one. I got some good news and some bad news, girls. The good news is your dates are here. What's the bad news? They're dead. Romy, it's Night of the Creeps. This is another fantastic creature feature. You got Tom frickin' Atkins, which you can't go wrong with him. Halloween 3, hello. If I could count that, I would. Technically, it's a sequel, and I'm not counting sequels either. No sequels, no slashers. Technically, it wouldn't be a slasher, but it would be a sequel. I would count it in here. And it'll probably bump house down. But Tom Atkins, freaking awesome in this movie. It's a throwback to the 50s creature feature craze, Alien Invaders, that stuff. It's great. You can even say that, oh, uh, you know, it's also copying Shivers by David Cronenberg. But, but those things make people have sex. This, this, this doesn't. This nice creature feature. And I wish we had more with this. I wish there was more, like, a sequel or something. I wish there was more do this. But I love this movie. It's it's a fun little horror comedy sci-fi trip. And I love it. Speaking of horror sci-fi comedies. My number seven is Killer Clowns from out of space and this is you want 80 schlock this is 80 schlock it's full on 80 schlock aliens that come down from outer space turn people into cotton candy so they can eat them and it's just you know 
Like, how are these? The, the end it always baffles me. Like, the, the Terenzi brothers survive. How? They were smooshed and they're still alive. And so is the cop. All three of them should be dead, but they're still alive. But it's a fun movie. Put it on and just turn your brain off. It's fantastic. All right. Remember, I said there's another vampire flick that's better than Fright Night. And thou shall not fall. It is the Lost Boys. Fantastic vampire flick. You know, the vampire flicks to end all vampire flicks, I think. Uh, but uh, yeah, um, I don't care for the tribe. I think the thirst is actually pretty good for a final chapter. Pretty good. But the original will always be the best. And, you know, it's just pure 80s. Something with the, with the Corys had 80s. This movie encapsulates the horror, 80s of horror in the 80s. And then Dream a Little Dream encapsulates the comedy of the 80s. It's just fantastic all around. Fantastic performances. Good effects to a point, And just great. Now we're in the top five. And it's the top tier. My top tier favorites. Number five, a movie I will shortly be revisiting. Let me look at the where this is being placed. Uh, Ted Tonight for Stephen King's Saturday Night, and that is Sidney Kubrick's The Shining. Uh, and this is a fantastic film, all around. Not going to spoil my rating. I am going to re. I haven't rewatched this yet, but I am going to rewatch it because it's a fantastic film. Jack Nicholson's performance is great. I do get where Kubrick was coming from with his casting. I do get it. I'll talk about it in my review. Uh, I do have another review out for this, if you want to listen to it. And I say listen to it because it was messed up. My first review where I I was still getting my bearings on YouTube. I didn't have this kind of setup. I had to use that makeshift uh, apparatus to put my camera phone on and I didn't flip it around. So all you see is the view of the apparatus. And so you just bas basically an audio version. And you're going to get a hopefully better version of that when I review it. Later tonight, Stephen King Saturday night, but uh, fantastic film performances. Stanley Kubrick was notorious for making people redo takes until they were perfect, and I guess it worked because this movie is fantastic. Just fantastic from beginning to end. Performances are great, so he got what he wanted out of them, and it's just great. All right, now those of you saying, wait a minute, a lot of people put that in their top two. What is more well i am more into the these next one are sort of creature features number four is the uh brian yuzna classic i guess you could say society a teenage boy always feels like he doesn't belong doesn't fit with his family or the high society stuff that they do and he eventually finds out that there's a reason for that. They're set to acting weird. And it's a very slow burn. Like all the crazy stuff that makes me love this film doesn't really happen to the end of the film. There are a few things. Like when he has sex with that one chick and she's like twisted. He goes into the bathroom and sees his sister wiping herself backwards. And then he, you know, it's all a little bit weird. And there's always something building the tension to when you're trying to figure out what it is that's going on and what you find what's going on. Oh, the shunting. The shunting. Oh, the shunting. Uh, but it, I think it's a fantastic film. Practical effects. And effects is the name of the game with these top four movies. Because number three is From Beyond. And I was going back and forth between this one and number two. Which one would be three or which one would be two. But I think I like two just a little bit more than this. But it's fantastic. You have Jeffrey Combs playing uh El Tillingast in Spanish. Back in the Spanish. Tillingast Crawford Tillingast, who is working as an experiment with a Dr. Pretorius, and it's an experiment to mess with the pileo gland, and it goes awry, and this reporter, I think she is, or a doctor. Look at Barbara Crampton comes in along with um, Ken Foray, and they try to figure out what's going on. It you know messed up. Pretorius comes back as this weird creature, 
And now it, they have to sort of try to stop him. But this thing is affecting him in different, affecting them in different ways. Ken Foray is, is in his underwear for a few minutes. Very weird. Uh, but it's a fantastic film. One of Stuart Gordon's best, along with my number two, Reanimator. And this is probably Stuart Gordon's best film, if I had to say so. This is why it's just above. But, uh, you know, Jeffrey Combs is probably his best in this film. And some would say The Frighteners, too. He's, he's at his kookiest in The Frighteners, but he's probably at his best here as a guy who just wants to find a way to cheat death. He wants to, you know, find a way of life after that by using this reagent. Let's see that there injecting it into the dead and trying to bring them back. It never probably works right. Even in three films, he does he gets closer and closer, but it never gets fully there. And it sucks that we're probably not going to get another one in this continuation. I did like the ones that Full Moon did. I thought they were very interesting. Uh, but uh, I love this. You got David Gale's head floating around. Bat wings. That, this one or is that the second one? I think that's the second one that has the bat wings, but you still got, you got that freaking head, you know, and great, great uh, effects in this movie. So, but number one, if we're talking about great effects and great directors, you can look no further than the all-time classic, John Carpenter's The Thing. And obviously this is the best. I mean, come on. The effects by Robotine... Get yeah, Rob Bottin, the score by Ennio Mar Marconi, rest in peace, and just everything. The way that Carpenter leaves up to the imagination is Child's a Thing, is McCready a Thing, is Mac a Thing, you don't know. And no, don't go by the video game that shows you that Mac, Mac is human, just don't, extra stuff, you know, just, yeah, it's just... You want to know, you want them to come back, and you want them to answer the questions, but also in the back of your mind, you're thinking, no, don't answer the questions, because no answer is going to be satisfying. Because if, Mac if, if McCready is the thing, then you're like, okay, that's why he's laughing at the end, but it's not really satisfying. It's, you want to know when. Sure, there's a there's a hint. They find his clothes, but that could also be a red herring. But Childs is the thing, which is another thing that they do, he disappears and then comes back. He's, you know, dressed a little bit different. He could be the thing, but who knows, you know. But, uh, yeah, it's a fantastic film, and I definitely recommend it. So that's my top ten horror films, non-slasher. My next one will be slashers. I'm going to get ready to work on that now. I'm going to try to record these, so I'll have to have to do is 31 on 31 when I'm done with the reviews, and then I'm done, period. That's the last one I want to record, so... What are your thoughts on my top 10 80s horror films? Leave a comment below. If you like, share, and subscribe. What are your top 10 horror, 80s horror films? Uh, you can put sequels in there, I guess. But I would like if you would keep my criteria. No sequels. Uh, remakes do count because I got the fly in there. But no sequels. Uh, no slashers, if you please. Because I got a slash list coming up. If you look, Please follow the criteria and let me know in, in, in the comments below. I would appreciate it. Thank you for watching. I've been Scotty, and I'll see you in the next one.